Hey everyone, welcome to Trades Tutor, and we're going to go through some combustion analysis today. We're going to go through natural gas, but before I want to, before I get to the um, the video, I just want to ask one thing of you guys, and that is if you enjoy this and you like this, please subscribe. That would be awesome and much appreciated. It'll help me out, and it would be great. Uh, yeah, thanks so much. So let's now get to the video itself. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with a graph. And on the horizontal axis, we're going to have the excess air or percent excess air. And I'll get to that in just a minute what that means. On the vertical axis, we're going to have the percent of the component. Now, the components we're talking about are carbon dioxide, oxygen, carbon monoxide, hydrogen, and methane. And really the two most, what we're looking for, the two most is carbon dioxide and oxygen. And if there's too much carbon monoxide, that would be an issue as well. All right. So if we go down to the left-hand corner, right where they meet, we'll start with zero. And the percent component goes 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And we'll, we'll see how that works in a bit. Now, the excess air, coming back to that, we start here at the zero point. If we drew a line right up the middle, what that line represents, anywhere on that line, what we'd have is perfect combustion. That's where the exact amount of air is introduced with the gas to combust. There's no th nothing extra, no extra air molecules. There's no excess air, we would say. So what we get is on this chart, it's kind of split to the right of that zero line and to the left of the zero line. Now, the excess air, 20%, 40%, 60, 80, up to 100. What we're talking about here is the amount of air added in excess of what we would need for perfect combustion. It's kind of like a adding air as a safety measure, in a sense. All right, so we call this part the actual excess air itself. Now, what that means is anything on that side is complete combustion. We are sending more than enough air to mix with the gas to make sure this thing is complete. Now, going to the left-hand side, though, we have, we'll see, 80 and 60. And what that represents is less air than is needed for perfect combustion. So 80 represents 80% 80 of the air needed for perfect combustion. 60 represents 60% 60 of the air. So this is, on this side, we call it aeration. And really, what we want to say is that this is incomplete combustion. That's not the side we want to be on. We want to be on the yellow part, the right side. All right. Now, we got to start putting a few of our components on here. So, first one, that red line represents carbon dioxide and how it acts given the different scenarios. Now, also, remember this is the complete combustion side. We would actually find carbon dioxide in the products of combustion on the incomplete combustion side, over on this side. So this is the one where, the only one where you get it on either side. All right? Now, oxygen is the next one. And this makes sense. We only are going to see oxygen in the products of combustion or combustion analysis when we have excess air. If we're on perfect combustion, well, every single oxygen molecule mixes with every single molecule of gas. All right, so what the idea here is, if you're taking a look at that chart, you want to find the relationships, how they work. So a couple questions. First, what happens to the percentage of CO2 as excess air increases. So you look at the excess air as it's going up. What happens to the CO2? And if you take a look at the chart, you can see it decreases. Now, we can, take a, we can just show this visually here. Excess air is going to go up. CO2 is going to come down. And there you go. 
Now the key here is it's the percent of CO2. It's not the amount, it's the percent. The amount actually stays the same, but the percent of CO2 actually decreases. So that's one relationship. The other one is what happens to oxygen? So what happens to the oxygen level as excess air increases? Same idea. Take a look at it visually. You can see what's going to happen. The oxygen, the percentage, isn't going to increase, which makes sense. More excess air, more oxygen you're going to get in the products of combustion. So as excess air increases, the oxygen level increases. That's two relationships. Now, there's also a few more things that, that we're going to put on this chart. It's not just those two. One, in the incomplete combustion side, we're actually going to get carbon monoxide, which is not what we want. This is the whole problem. This is why we add excess air in the first place, to avoid this scenario. If we don't have complete combustion, we also might get methane. Okay, You can see it right there. And then there's a third one we might get on incomplete combustion, and that's hydrogen. So that's all the different variables, all the different components. Now, what we want to do is, then we have this graph, that's great, but how do we read this thing? Okay, so we'll just ask a couple questions. Okay, so, an appliance has 80% excess air, so you would look on the excess air chart, go out to the 80%, and the key is, what are we, how much oxygen and how much carbon dioxide would we expect in the products of combustion reading this chart? So, you go out to the um, excess air, you see the 80 there starting to be in yellow, and you just draw a line straight up until you hit that carbon dioxide. Now what you do at that point is you go left. And there you go, that's the percent of carbon dioxide. So we would get 5.9 percent of carbon dioxide, that's what we would expect given 80 percent excess air. Now, if you want to find out the oxygen level, go up a little bit more. Continue on straight up till you hit that, the oxygen line. Once again, go left, and we get about 9.2%. That's the readings we'd expect to find. All right, should we try another one? All right. Let's go... An appliance has 50% excess air. This is basically an atmospheric or natural draft appliance. The air going in, the air going through, the air going out of the appliance is all just natural. There's no fans or motors or anything like that pushing it around. So once again, go down to the excess air. We have to add the 50%. We can see it right there. And go straight up. And coincidentally, it, it lands almost where, they, where the oxygen and the carbon dioxide uh, um, cross. So once again, go, go left, and for the carbon dioxide, we get about 6.8, and if we were to go up a little bit more and go left, we get the oxygen at about 7.2. Now, a lot of times when we teach theory, we just say that at 50% excess air, we're looking for about 7.5% of both around the same, okay? Not too hard to read. But what if we had the reverse? What if we were given a component, the percent of a component, and had to go the reverse? So let's try that. So, all right, you got 4% oxygen in the products of combustion. So go over to the percent component part. Oh, how much excess air is present? Good idea. How, what should we try to find out here? Go over to the percent component part. part. 4%. There you go. There's your line. Now come across, go to the right until you hit the oxygen line. Boom. And then go down. And you get about 25% excess air. There you go. So we've created the chart. We've looked at some relationships, done a couple examples, and hopefully this will help you guys out. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care. Have a great day. And uh, see you soon.